away. Good morning and welcome to the breakfast news on Rajya Sabha Television, the perfect show to kick start your day, bringing you the top national, international sports and business news. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor and here are this morning's headlines. Prime Minister meets her secretaries to government, directs them to identify concrete goals for 2022, says have an opportunity to transform one sixth of humanity. India rejects the Trump's charge that it signed the Paris deal for law of money. Sushma Swaraj says the deal is India's commitment to environment. Pakistani origin man among two attackers named in the London Bridge attack case. Three men carried out the van and knife attack, killing seven people. No challenge arising out of a Gulf split, says India. Yemen and Maldives also join Saudi Arabia, UAE, Egypt and Bahrain in a snapping diplomatic ties with Qatar. And Rohan Bopana and Canadian partner storm into French Open mixed doubles semi-finals. Annie Marie Wawrinka, Pliskova and Halep make it to the singles quarter-finals. Our top story this morning, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has asked top bureaucrats to identify concrete goals to be achieved by 2022. He asked them to focus on development of 100 most backward districts in a mission mode through a short time frame. Now, while interacting with all the secretaries to the government of India, Prime Minister Modi asked them to work beyond their respective ministries. Now, according to the statement released by the PMO, the Prime Minister said that uh, the bureaucrats had the opportunity to transform the lives of one-sixth of humanity. Now, underlining uh, their contributions, Prime Minister Modi said that some of the best results in the last three years were achieved when the entire government machinery worked as a team. He cited examples of schemes like Jandhan Yojana and Mission uh, Indradhanush. Now, on the GST regime to be rolled out from 1st of July this year, Prime Minister Modi said that it would mark uh, a turning point in the country's history and asked the secretaries uh, to prepare for the transmission. Now, Union Ministers uh, Rajnath Singh, Arun Jaitley, Sushma Swaraj and Nitin Gadkari also addressed the secretaries. Now, Indian Army's uh, DGMO has uh, told his Pakistani counterpart uh, that uh, appropriate retaliatory action will be taken if Pakistan uh, resorted to unprovoked firing along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. The telephony conversation came on Monday when uh, four militants were killed while attempting an attack on a CRPF camp. Four terrorists were killed by security forces on Monday as they tried to carry out a suicide attack on a CRPF camp in Sambal and Bandipura district. Officials confirmed the heavily armed militants tried to enter the camp of the 45th CRPF battalion around 3.45 a.m. and the terrorists were killed in retaliatory firing. Four AK-47 rifles and grenades were recovered from the encounter site. The attackers were also reportedly carrying petrol to set the camp on fire. Soon after the incident, security forces cordoned off the area. There were four Fedayans involved in this encounter. They attacked the camp the sentry post and the outer periphery by hurling grenades and by resulting by reverting to automatic fire. Our sentries replied immediately and our QRTs and replacements, reinforcements came in, including our company commanders who were on the side. And we were able to engage the Fedayans successfully and we were able to kill four Fedayans in an encounter that lasted for about 45 minutes. Four AK-47, which was with them, and the rest of the magazines. One thing is that the petrol is in a lot of time. So it seemed like it was probably in the camp and tried to put it in the camp. The Home Minister Rajnath Singh lauded the CRPF and Jammu and Kashmir police personnel for their alertness and courage. The Home Minister Rajnath Singh lauded the CRPF and Jammu and Kashmir police in another incident, an army jaman was injured in a landmine blast along the LOC in Poonch. Kashmir has remained tense after the killing of Hezbollah commander over a week back, which was followed by shutdown by separatists. Several separatist leaders, including Mirwais Omar Farooq, were also put under house arrest to stop them from holding a meeting at hardline Hurriyat Conference Chairman Syed Ali Shah Gilani's residence. 
The meeting was convened to discuss the NIA raids on separatist leaders for allegedly accepting money from Pakistan to cause unrest in Kashmir. Information Broadcasting Minister Venkaiah Naidu has ruled out the possibility of holding talks with Kashmiri separatists. Naidu also called the separatists destructive and further added to the Hawala money allegations. Staying in the country, eating the country's food, serving the cause of others, what is which hunting? You are an Indian, you have to be loyal to India. How can you call yourself a separatist? That is the question. And moreover, they have been receiving money from across the border. That is the information they got. That's why raids are conducted. If, if, you have, if you have no problem, then why should you worry? Meanwhile, Indian Army's Director General of Military Operations, in a telephonic conversation with his Pakistani counterpart, told him that any attempt by the Pakistan military to resort to unprovoked firing along the LOC in Jammu and Kashmir and abet infiltrators would be met with appropriate retaliatory actions. He also conveyed India's commitment to ensuring peace and tranquility contingent on the Pakistan Army's intentions and actions. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to some other news now. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj on Monday reiterated that India wants to resolve all issues with Pakistan through dialogue, but also asserted that talks and terror cannot go hand in hand. The minister made it clear that Kashmir issue can only be resolved bilaterally and that Pakistan cannot take it to the International Court of Justice. India will also not accept a mediation from any other country or organization. The minister also denied any flip-flop in India's policy on Pakistan. Sushma Suraj was addressing a press conference on the completion of three years of the NDA government. कश्मीर को वो किसी भी तरह से आईसीजी में नहीं ले जा सकता क्योंकि कश्मीर के ऊपर शिमला अग्रीमेंट और लाहौर डिक्लेरेशन बहुत ही क्लियर है कि बायलेट्रल मुद्दा है और दोनों देश आपस में बैठकर ही निपटाएंगे जहां तक ये सवाल है कि फिर हम वहां क्यों गए हम कश्मीर को नहीं ले गए आईसीजी में हमारे बहुत से मुद्दे कोर्ट में भारत और पाकिस्तान के बीच चल रहे हैं now, China plans to continue blocking India's attempts to join the elite uh, nuclear suppliers group or the NSG, claiming that uh, Delhi's bid uh, has become more complicated under new circumstances. However, China did not elaborate what these changed circumstances were. Well, the nuclear suppliers group has uh, 48 member countries who control trade in sophisticated civil nuclear technology. China is among the countries that object to India's admission to the bloc. For any new country to become a member, there should be consensus among other nations. Now, China's Assistant uh, Minister for Foreign Affairs said, and I quote him now, about the nuclear suppliers group or the NSG, it is a new issue under the new circumstances and it is more complicated than previously imagined, unquote. Remember, Pakistan has also applied for an entry into the NSG, even though China does not uh, openly back Islamabad's entry either, it uh, does uh, group India and Pakistan in the same bracket. Now, NSG rules require that the members be the signatories of the NPT or the Non-Proliferation Treaty. Both India and Pakistan are yet to sign that. But uh, it is also notable that India's record of uh, nuclear non-proliferation is in sharp contrast to Pakistan's, something reiterated time and again by countries including the United States. <laughs> ये अधिकार मिल गया जो हमारी प्रतिबद्धताएं या कमिटमेंट्स हमने उस समय की थी उसको 100% नहीं 101 फीसदी हमने पूरा किया है इसीलिए हम इंडिया और पाकिस्तान के उस पर भी उनको बता रहे हैं कि दोनों चीजें अलग-अलग हैं रही बात बातचीत की तो हमने चाइना को हमेशा इंगेज किया है हम अब बीएनएसजी के नाते इंगेज कर रहे हैं बातचीत करके उनको समझाने का सिलसिला केवल भारत ही नहीं करे भारत के मित्र देश भी करें इस ओर हम लोग लगे हुए Let's move on in the bulletin. Now, India has uh, strongly rejected U.S. President Donald Trump's charge against it on the climate deal. Now, reacting to questions on whether India signed the deal under duress or for the lure of money, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj said that it was because of its commitment to protect the environment. Now, Donald Trump, while pulling out of uh, the accord, had said that India was receiving billions of money for being part of the deal. Sushma Swaraj, however, reiterated that India's commitment to environment is not recent, but is part of its culture and ethos. Prime Minister also said that I want to say to him that in India, there is a lot of money in the Paris Agreement, and there is a lot of 
ना तो किसी देश के दबाव में किए थे और ना किसी देश के पैसे के लालच में किए थे ये लोभ के कारण किए गए हस्ताक्षर नहीं है ये भय के कारण किए गए हस्ताक्षर नहीं है ये हमारी पर्यावरण के प्रति प्रतिबद्धता के कारण किए हुए हस्ताक्षर है और जैसा प्रधानमंत्री ने कहा वो प्रतिबद्धता आज की नहीं है वो पांच हजार वर्ष पुरानी है इसलिए कोई ये कहे कि हमने किसी के पैसे के लालच में आकर के पेरिस समझौते पर हस्ताक्षर या कोई ये कहे कि हमने दबाव में आकर कर दिए मैं इस दोनों आरोपों को सिरे से खारिज करती हूं और ये कहती हूं कि हमने ये हस्ताक्षर केवल अपनी कमिटमेंट के कारण किए इसलिए अमेरिका उसमें रहे या ना रहे भारत उसमें बना रहेगा and the urban development ministry on monday launched its solid waste management initiative in the national capital region now union minister venkaiya naidu kick started the waste segregation uh, campaign in nine of ncr's uh, urban local bodies including five in delhi now under the initiative uh, the government will uh, install two dustbins wet waste in the green bins and dry waste in blue bins this will be mandatory for all the households hotels restaurants as well as public places The initiative aims are to address major environmental issues like inappropriate disposal and burning of solid waste. The program will be launched in 130 cities where waste to compost plants are either functional or under construction. ये व्यवस्था केवल सरकार के द्वारा कॉरपोरेशन के द्वारा नहीं आप लोग भी खुद करना चाहिए अपना घर के सामने दो बकेट रखना ये कोई बड़ा विषय है क्या? इसके लिए सरकार पैसा देना है क्या? दुर्भाग्य यह है इस देश में आजादी के इतना साल के बाद भी हमारा लोगों में एक प्रवृत्ति बन गया उसके लिए अमीरों की जिम्मेदार है राजनेता प्रवृत्ति क्या है सब काम सरकार करेगा अब बेकार बैठे तो चलेगा मोदी जी ने कहा नहीं चलेगा जनता का भागीदारी होना चाहिए पीपुल्स इन्वॉल्वमेंट एवरीबडी शुड बिकम पार्ट ऑफ इट एंड एवरीबडी शुड डू देर ड्यूटी देर ऑनली इट विल बी देर ऑनली इट विल बी सक्सेसफुल And Isro added another key feather to, to its cap on Monday, successfully launching India's heaviest communication satellite, the GSAT-19, aboard a homegrown GSLV Mark III rocket. Well, the rocket, weighing 640 tons and standing at 43.43 meters, successfully lifted off at 5:28 p.m. from the second launch pad at the Satish Dhawan Space Center in Sri Hari Kota. The rocket carried long into space the GSAT-19 communication satellite. Weighing a uh, 3,136 kilogram to an altitude of around uh, 179 kilometers above the Earth, after just over 16 minutes into the flight. Now, this is the heaviest uh, satellite to be launched on an indigenous rocket. It is expected that one day it will also successfully carry astronauts to space. Now, up till now, ISRO had to depend on foreign launchers for communication satellites weighing more than 2,300 kilogram. Now the GSLV Mark 3D is capable of lifting payloads of up to 4000 kilograms into the geosynchronous transfer orbit and 10000 kilograms into the low earth orbit. ISRO scientists named the rocket Bahubali and Vedant Boy after its successful launch. It is being hailed as a turning point in the Indian space journey. The agency will work on launching vehicles with the electric propulsion system so that larger satellites also can be sent into space by the agency the culmination of uh, a large amount of work done over decades and we are extremely happy that uh, this mission has been successful and it has put gsat 19 into its uh, orbit and from the initial parameters we have received it's a perfect launch and uh, it has gone into the right perigee apogee and inclination and we have already got the information from the satellite that it is being tracked and uh, its health is good today's launch is a historic one it's a game changer actually it's a game changer this has brought in india the self reliance much much required self reliance in the run of 410 class satellite launch. Indian soil itself. We don't have to depend upon any foreign country. This is the significance of this. When you have changed from ASLV 150 to uh, around 2,000 class satellites from PSLV, same excitement is there now. We are when we are changing from 2,000 to 4,000 class. It's a different class of vehicle altogether. With uh, Indian cryogenic technology being fully proven for first time, first flight itself. And wishes poured in after ISRO's successful launch. Prime Minister Narendra Modi congratulated Team ISRO on its success on Twitter. 
and said the nation is proud of its achievements. President Pranam Mukherjee also took to Twitter to congratulate ISRO on the launch. In uh, the congratulatory message, uh, the president, vice president of the country, Mohamed Hamid Ansari, said, and I quote him now, the successful launch of the indigenously developed heavy lift space uh, vehicle, including the cryogenic stage, uh, demonstrates India's ability to launch large payloads and opens up the possibility of increased space exploration and its utilization for the benefit of humanity. The flawless launch once again showcases India's capabilities in the field of uh, space sciences and related technologies. I wish ISRO all the very best for the future. Congress President uh, Sonia Gandhi also wished ISRO on the successful launch of GSLV Mark III satellite. And in breakfast news, we'll take a very short break here. We'll be back. Stay with us. The sacred relics of Buddha were unearthed in Piprava in Uttar Pradesh. Buddha. Buddhist monks from all over the world visit the National Museum to pay their respects. These charred bone fragments of Buddha are housed in the gold canopy gifted by the royal family of Thailand. Thanks for staying with us. Now, the Congress Working Committee or the CWC, the highest decision-making body of the party, will meet today in the national capital. Among the agenda for the meeting is to discuss the issue of forging a large opposition unity and Rahul Gandhi's elevation as well. The meeting after a gap of seven months, senior members of the CWC in all likelihood will push for appointing Rahul Gandhi as the next Congress president. On a 7th of November meeting, all of the members, including former Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh and uh, senior leader A.K. Antony, had made a strong pitch for Rahul Gandhi to take over the reins of the party. Now, CWC is expected to ratify the schedule for organizational polls as well. According to schedule, the next Congress president has to be elected by 15th of October. The meeting is being held at a time when the Congress is uh, seeking to unite the opposition parties ahead of the presidential election. Now, more than 30,000 doctors across the country are expected to join a protest rally in Delhi today. Now, the Indian Medical Association has given a call for the nationwide strike. The protest will be held under the Dilli Chalo program. Now, the strike call is uh, to protest violence against doctors. A signature campaign has been launched throughout the country. A memorandum will be submitted to the Union Health Minister after the dharna. News from Maharashtra now and the ongoing farmer strike in the state received a partial response on Monday with the trucks carrying vegetables arriving in big markets like Pune and Navi Mumbai. All the 15 agriculture produce marketing committees in Nashik district remained closed. A total ban was observed in Puntamba in Ahmednagar district, the epicenter of the strike. Whereas in Ahmednagar district, farmers burnt an effigy of Chief Minister Rifar Navis. Remember, farmers are on strike since the 1st of June for demands uh, including a loan waiver and a higher minimum support price as well. From 7th of June onwards, uh, they are planning to lock up all the officers of the MLAs and MPs in the state. Now, despite the government announcing a loan waiver for marginal farmers on Saturday, the agitation has continued. The umbrella group of agitating farmers in Maharashtra has also threatened to intensify the stir by locking down government offices. The Maharashtra Congress, meanwhile, has demanded a special session of the legislature to discuss the situation. Let's now get to the weather update. Uh, some respite is predicted for Delhi from the simmering heat. Now, the Met Department has forecast rainfall today. This comes after intense heat wave over the past couple of days. Now, Delhi recorded 44.6 degrees Celsius on Monday. Jhansi in Uttar Pradesh uh, reeled at 47.2 degrees Celsius. Punjab and Haryana also continued to reel under blistering heat with Amritsar being the hottest in two states at 46 degrees Celsius. Now the weather in Rajasthan remained dry and temperatures fell uh, by 1 to 2 degrees in most places. The Bok received uh, 2 centimeters of rainfall since yesterday and Churu was the hottest at 45.5 degrees Celsius. Now cloudy and windy conditions uh, brought the temperature down in some parts of Bihar 
But Gaya was the hottest place in the state, recording a maximum of 38.5 degrees Celsius. Now, some places in Odisha witnessed a drop in mercury following rains, even as the western parts of the state continued to sizzle. Meanwhile, rainfall uh, occurred in some parts of Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshadweep, Kerala, coastal Karnataka, and in isolated parts of Assam, Meghalaya, and Chhattisgarh as well. Ulti dust ke rogi aur bukhar ke rogi kafi matra mein hai. Ab in mein se kuch ko garmi ki wajah se kyunki tapman bhot zada bada hai is samay. To temperature normal bhi ek dam se bada jata hai. Khas taur se jo log ek dam bhari do pehri mein nikal lete hai ghar se bahar. Garmi ki wajah se bhot dikat to rahi hai. Chakkar bhi aa rahi hai aur dil khabda rahi hai aur utha nahi jari hai. Bhot bhaal hoi bhai hai garmi naal. And uh, let's uh, get you an update on the political situation in uh, Nepal. And the country's parliament will vote today to elect uh, veteran politician Sher Bahadur Dueba as the 40th Prime Minister of the country. The voting was originally scheduled for Sunday, but it was postponed after the main political parties failed to forge a consensus to conduct a House proceedings. Now, Dueba, whose name was recommended by outgoing Prime Minister Prachand, needs to secure 297 votes in the 593 members' strong parliament to prove his majority. Prachand, I remember, had to resign on uh, 24th of May after a brief stint of nine months, honouring a power-sharing agreement with the ruling coalition partner, Nepali Congress. Let's get to the top international story. Now, India has said that it would not be impacted by some of the Gulf countries cutting off diplomatic ties with Qatar. The Gulf states uh, banned their citizens from traveling to Qatar and also ordered Qatari citizens to leave their countries within 14 days. Land and sea links have also been halted to that country. Now, two key factors drove Gulf nations' decision. Qatar's ties to the Islamist groups and the role of Iran, which is Saudi Arabia's regional rival. Biggest diplomatic crisis to hit the Gulf region unfolds. With several Gulf countries cutting off diplomatic ties with Qatar, accusing the nation of supporting extremism in the region. On Monday, the effect started to show with Saudi and UAE airlines suspending all flights to and from Doha, the capital of Qatar. The other airways in the rest of the countries involved will follow suit. Qatari visitors and residents have been given two weeks to leave these nations. Land and sea links have also been halted. Qatar also hit back with its airways saying it will suspend all flights to these nations. <laughs> Apart from three Gulf countries, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and the UAE, Egypt, Yemen and the Maldives also cut ties with Qatar. Saudi Arabia took it one step further by closing down a local office of Qatar's influential Al Jazeera TV channel. Qatar has called the charges unjustified and baseless. U.S. and other nations have called on all sides to resolve their differences. Uh, look, the president's committed to continuing to have conversations with all of the people involved in that process, with all of those countries. Uh, we want to continue to de-escalate that. And at this point, we're continuing to work with each of those partners. Meanwhile, India says that it won't be impacted by the development in the Gulf region. Where the investment of Qatar, the question of Qatar's airline, the rest of the MOUs that we have with them, there is no difference between them. Because what you have said is that in Saudi and Iran, there are also 36 countries. But we are also doing Iran with Iran, and with Saudi, we have also good relationships with Iran. So, on our own hands, or on our own hands, we have to make a decision on our own hands. In Qatar, apart from the threat of large-scale travel disruption, there are reports of residents stockpiling food and water as Qatar is heavily dependent on Saudi Arabia for its food imports. Stock market in Qatar and rest of the Six Nation Gulf Cooperation Council also dropped after the development. While the severing of the ties was sudden, it has not come out of the blue as tensions have been building for years. 
Two weeks ago, the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain and Egypt had blocked Qatari news sites over comments allegedly made by Qatari Emir Sheikh Tamim al Hamad al Thani, wherein he hailed Iran as an Islamic power. However, experts say that Donald Trump's recent visit to Saudi may also have emboldened the country, where the US president urged Muslim countries to take the lead in combating radicalization. Saudi Arabia, the UAE, Bahrain, Oman, Kuwait and Qatar form regional alliance Gulf Cooperation Council. After Monday's development, only Kuwait and Oman have ties with Qatar. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Let's now get your news uh, from the French Open and uh, India's uh, Rohan Bopanna and his uh, Canadian partner Gabriela Dabrowski stormed into the semi-finals of the mixed doubles event of uh, the French Open. The seven-seeded pair defeated the second-seeded duo of Asanya Mirza and Ivan Dodik 6-3, 6-4 in the quarter-final match. The win leaves Bupanna as the only Indian left in the fray in the Grand Slam. Meanwhile, in the men's singles, world number one Andy Murray produced a clinical performance to reach a seventh French Open quarter-final. Murray saw the Russian Karin Kacharov 6-3, 6-4, 6-4 packing to set up our last eight clash with the Japan's key Nishikori. The fifth seed Nishikori earlier defeated Spain's Fernando Verdasco in four sets in the fifth round match. The third seed Stan Wawrinka also booked a place in the quarterfinals with a comfortable 7-5-7-6-6-2 win over Frenchman Gail Monfils. He will next face Marin Cilic of Croatia who reached the quarterfinal after his opponent Kevin Anderson retired with a thigh injury. Meanwhile, in the women's singles, the second seed uh, Carolina Pliskova overcame challenge from world number 97 Veronica Roigo to make it to the quarterfinals. Pliskova was uh, shocked in the first set uh, by the Paraguayan, but she eventually won 2 6, 6 3, 6 4. A third seed, uh, Simona Halep of Romania, also progressed to the last eight with comfortable straight sets victory over Carla Suarez uh, Navarro of Spain. And in cricket in the Champions Trophy, rain frustrated Australia and kept Bangladesh's Champions Trophy hopes alive as their Group A match was abandoned at the Oval. Now, choosing to bat first, Bangladesh struggled with their batting and they were bowled out for just 182 runs with the pacer Mitchell Stark picking up a four wickets for Australia. Now, Tami Mikbal once again top scored for the Asian side with 95 runs. Now, chasing the target, Australia reached 83 for one before rain arrived after 16 overs. Four short of the number read it for the result. And the result leaves Australia with two points from two games. Their uh, first game against New Zealand was also abandoned due to rain. Bangladesh are still in contention for the semi-final spot with one point from two games. Meanwhile, in today's encounter, hosts uh, England uh, will take on New Zealand uh, at Cardiff. England uh, had won their opening encounter against Bangladesh and a victory today will ensure them a semi-final berth. New Zealand, on the other hand, will look for their first win of the tournament after their first match against Australia was washed out due to rain. Well, that's it from me and my team in this edition of News. Thanks for watching. Have a great day ahead.